Hello NASCAR fans, Chris Terrell here with rotopros.com to bring you my DFS NASCAR preview video for the Gold Bowling at the Glen. The second of three road course races here. I'm going to be at Watkins Glen International in New York here this weekend. With five races remaining in the regular season, we've got some drivers who are on the bubble to make the playoffs. What I've done in our members chat this week is I've provided a little bit extra info just going ahead and looking at the standings, how things might play out from a strategy perspective through the weekend. What I've done is I've grouped drivers together. Um, I've, I've actually made it into four groups. So group one is the drivers have already got wins. They're searching for obviously more playoff points which come with winning the stages as well as the race. Those playoff points um, carry over into the playoffs and they can use those as you know somewhat of a cushion um, if they were to get in a wreck in the first race of the playoffs. They've got you know those 30, 40, 50 points some drivers cushion um, to help them make up for that. So it is very crucial for those drivers with wins to go ahead and grab those points. The second set, of, uh, those drivers include Martin Trucks Jr. has got four wins, Kyle Busch got four wins, Kozlowski and Hamlin each have three wins, Logano has two wins, and then Bowman, Elliott, Bush, Kurt Busch that is, and Kevin Harvick all have one win. So those are the drivers that fall into group one for me. Um, the second group of drivers, they don't have wins, but they have more than six, they're more than 60 points ahead of the cut line. Now I go 60 points because that's the max um, a driver can get in a race with winning both stages as well as the rate uh, as well as the third stage which is obviously the end of the race so those drivers include eric almirola at 614 points ryan blaney at 599 points they're a little bit more on the safe side just because they've got that greater than 60 point cushion right now um but you know they're still going to be looking for for points there as well just to kind of stay ahead with five races remaining the third group is those drivers fighting for points in the standings. They're all right there around, um, this is 12th to 18th, the drivers from 12th to 18th. So we've got William Byron at 582 points. We've got Eric Jones at 552, Kyle Larson 557, Ryan Newman 532, and Clint Boyer 532. They're tied right there on the bubble at that 16th position. And then you got Jimmy Johnson 520 points. So he's 12 points back going into this race. And then Daniel Suarez, 501 points. So he's 31 points back. Those are the drivers I kind of got there. The reason I put those all together is because when it comes down to the end of stage two, these are the drivers, if they're inside the top 10 or anywhere sniffing just the top 10, you know, even from 11th to 14th, we might see those drivers with wins, you know, pit with uh, two laps to go before the pit road closes at the end of stage two just to go and get their cars set up. They don't care where they're starting, um, you know, how they, they're not care. They're not caring about the stage points is what I'm trying to get at. So they're going to go in and get their cars set up so they can make a run and win the race in the final stage. Versus these drivers that are points, if they're anywhere near that top 10, they're going to be staying out on the track almost certainly to get though as many um, points as they possibly can. And that is, you know, they're going to obviously pit when pit road opens after the end of the stage, but that's going to put them starting a little bit further back in the field on the restart of the final stage. And that's, you know, definitely going to hurt their winning upside, um, in my opinion, just because it's a very tough track to, to pass, first of all. We're going to look at that here shortly when I uh, turn things over to the cheat sheet. So those are drivers we're going to have to pay attention to where they qualify um, and just see how fast their cars are. Like, I mean... Eric Jones, we're going to talk about uh, Clint Boyer a little bit, Daniel Suarez, those three drivers out of that group of the drivers that are in 12th to 18th and looking for points. Those drivers are very good here um, at this track. They're good on road courses in general. Um, so they might just push it and go for get that win because a win is obviously going to guarantee them into the playoffs. So um, we're going to have to just, you know, not look at this as just something that, okay, I'm going to eliminate this driver because he falls into this group. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to give more information uh, when building our lives for comparing two drivers, which driver maybe has more upside. Um, does this driver have a win already? Does this driver maybe uh, 20, 30 points back of the, of the cut line? Um, just a lot of things that we need to think about as we get near the end of the regular season here. And then, of course, the fourth group is the driver. They also have no wins. They're over 60 points behind the bubble, and they're pretty much in a uh, they need to win to get in the playoffs. They're not going to get there by points. They're too many back. They have not enough races to make up those points. They're probably going to be working with strategies, um, you know, way wacky strategies to try and get that win. And th th these drivers include Paul Menard, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Chris Buescher, Austin and Ty Dillon, and Matt DiBenedetto. Um, so keep in mind those drivers I do like, you know, 
obviously you can tell most of them are they're all going to be value priced on FanDuel and DraftKings. But those are the drivers I'm looking at in that group. They're going to um, definitely be going with some some different strategies to try and get that win versus trying to get as many uh, stage points as possible there. So before I jump into the cheat sheet and share the cheat sheet, I just want to uh, go a little bit here about uh, Rotopros itself. So if you're not a Rotopros member yet, um, make sure to get over to rotopros.com. Um, what you're going to be able to do is get a free trial and what we you know we're looking at a lot of uh one of our biggest things obviously is our lineup coaching that you see here we do one-on-one -on -one coaching in our slack chat um that comes with your with your premium membership from us that's the biggest thing that we offer really is the education part of it um to not just help you pick players on a daily basis to tell you which matchups are the best but how to choose the right contest how to manage your bankroll um and and make this a sustainable thing where you can actually profit um, going forward in the long run. So that's that's what we offer. So if you're not a member yet, get over to rotopros.com, click that yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner. And once you do that, um, you're going to get a free trial, three day trial on a weekly, and then a seven day trial on a monthly or yearly subscription. And then if you use promo code NASCAR, what you're going to get is a 50% off your payment after uh, the trial period is over. Um, so there, there's a lot of good value there. So definitely head over, see what we're all about here at rotopros.com. I'm pretty sure you're not going to be disappointed um, with what we got. So with this race here, like I said, we've got five races left in the regular season. We've got the second of three road courses here this season. So we're going to look at some track history, some track type history. Uh, practice one is actually wrapped up here as I recorded this video. So I'm going to talk a little bit about practice one. I've got it loaded onto the cheat sheet here as well. And then I'm going to talk about some new stuff that I added to the cheat sheet on the members only side of things. So if you're watching this video, you'll get a glimpse into some of the stuff that I'm adding to the cheat sheet um, for members only going forward. So we'll just jump across here and we'll just jump right into the track history. So I'll scroll over here on the cheat sheet. Now, first thing I'll show you here, obviously, if you are um, new to the cheat sheets, you maybe want to make your own copy and adjust the model. Like over on the far right hand side, here's where I've got my model and I put my weights here in the orange um, rows of how much importance I want on each of these things each week. And that's where these overall ranks come from. If you want to make your own, adjust those models how you see fit. At the top of this page, and you can't see it here, but at the top of the Google Sheet, you're going to see File. Click on File, then click Make a Copy. Name it whatever you'd like and click OK. Now you've got an editable version. So you can actually go in. Um, I've got Practice 1 loaded here, so I'm, you know um, what I could do, I could change around this stuff here. Like I could put a little bit less on track history, more on track type history, if that's the way you want to go about your model. And as you make those changes, obviously, you're going to see um, the overall ranks will change. So you're going to see overall ranks change as I update practice information and qualifying information throughout the weekend here. So first thing we're going to look at here is some track history. Um, last two races here, so this is the last two years, there's only one race at Watkins Glen each year. So we'll just go and we'll look at the last six races at Watkins Glen tab. Uh, Chase Elliott won from the third spot, so a few takeaways here for me when looking at this um, information we got Chase Elliott last year starting from third Martin Trex Jr. won in 2017 starting from third Denny Hamlin from the sixth position Joey Logano from 16th a little bit of an outlier there AJ Allmendinger from sixth Kyle Busch from fifth in 2013 I look at the last six races on my sheet you scroll down to the bottom you got a lot more information here as you can see the correlation has been very high uh, between starting position and finishing position if you look at how many drivers started top 10 and finished there we've got five five seven three five and five six sorry um so we've had five or more in five of the last six races um two drivers started outside the top 20 last year and finished top 10 we go up here and look we got daniel suarez started 21st finished fourth and then kurt bush started at the back and came back and finished with the top 10 but other than that, we haven't had many drivers. Zero in 2017. We had one in 2016, two in 2015, two in 2014, um, zero in 2013. So for the most part, we're not seeing drivers. Like I said, it's a very tough track to pass. Track position is, is definitely um, number one here, especially on road courses, talking about than any other course. We talked about 
or any other track. We talked about New Hampshire, how important it was. This is just even more important this week. And then when it comes to dominator points, um, 100 plus laps led doesn't happen. There's only 90 laps in the race. Uh, 50 plus laps led one driver last year. And before that, 2013 was the last time before last year's race where a driver led 50 or more laps. And looking at drivers that led two or more, or sorry, led 20 or more laps, we've got two, two, three, two, three, and two. So we're kind of looking at, you know, maybe Dominator isn't as important because we're going to see maybe two or three drivers lead between 20 and 50 laps, 20 and 60 laps, something like that. Um, sometimes we can get three drivers lead 20 laps, um, two drivers lead 20, one of them leading 50 plus. But those drivers are obviously going to have an advantage so having those dominators so we're going to want to pay attention to practice and that's something else that i've added this week um, when you want to break down practice information as i went and looked at first of all the, the road course information here so this is a lot going back to the start of last year uh, sonoma the roval watkins Glen, and sonoma last year wins top fives top tens average finish same with DraftKings scoring here with averages that's for road courses going back to the start of last year and then I also wanted to look at uh, correlation between practice times and finishing position here at Watkins Glen. So I've got the last six races here as well. Um, green, anything in green here is practice times inside the top 10. So we're going to be looking at that. Um, drivers that finish, as you can see, Martin Truex Jr. finished top 10 in both practices, finished second. Jamie McMurray, top 10s in both, finished seventh. And then we've got Denny Hamlin. 13th, um, McDowell 18th. Gets even better the next year. We've got a group of four drivers that finished 12th to 15th, top 10 in both practices. Kyle Busch, um, seven, he was one of the lap leaders. And then Martin Trex Jr., second and third in the two practices, 24. So you can use this data to kind of look at where guys did in practice versus how many laps they led and where they finished in the race. And as you can see, the correlations I've got up here, and this is just a correlation between practice one, finishing position, practice two, and finishing position for each of the last six races. As you can see, it's very high. Um, we have one outlier here, like practice two in 2014 had a very low correlation, but for the most part, it's all over four and a lot of it over 0.5 and 0.6, up even into the 0.7s when it comes to um, practice speed. So that's something we're going to want to look at. Obviously, we've been through practice one already, like I talked about. So let's have a look at those practice speeds here real quick. So we'll go and we will sort by just the, their one lap speeds, top speeds. We had Alex Bowman, and if you're watching the broadcast, he went out and did a qualifying run, and he jumped Kyle Busch at the end. So keep that in mind um, with Alex Bowman there. Kyle Busch looked like he had the strongest car on the track out there. Um, he also had the top five lap average um, with the laps being longer. They're looking at five lap averages instead of 10 lap average. So it's really good to see Kyle Busch, fastest car on the track. And then Denny Hamlin, he was third in both five lap and one lap. Chase Elliott was fourth overall, second in, in five lap. He won this race last year as well. Um, so we then finishing out the top 10, we got Kyle Larson, Ryan Blaney, Martin Truex Jr., Brad Kozlowski, and Eric Jones, and Joey Logano. So first of all, all four of the JGR cars finished top 10 in first practice. And then we've got all three of the Penske cars. We've got Logano, Kozlowski, and Blaney. They all finished top 10. So that's nine of the top 10 cars just coming from those two teams with Alex Bowman. Sorry, counting bad. Seven of the top 10. Then we've got Alex Bowman, Chase Elliott from Hendrick. And then we've got uh, Kyle Larson and Chevy as well finished up there um, for Chip Ganassi in the top 10. So we've got only i believe let's just sort here by five lap averages yeah there's only 20 drivers that ran five lap runs out there um so i mean when you're looking at Corey lajoy that doesn't mean Corey lajoy in 20th is better than eric jones who didn't have a five lap average what you're going to want to do is you can go over and look at the practice tabs and you can just see the difference in speeds like kyle bush led the five lap averages let me change that here at 125 miles an hour well Corey lajoy was 20th and only 120 that's four miles an hour difference between first and 20th in those five lap averages, that's huge. Um, so keep that in mind when you're looking at some of these ranks when not all drivers are ranked. So there's only 20 drivers in those five lap averages. You can definitely go look at that. But looking at drivers that are strong here at this track specifically, let's just look at uh, just the last two races, for instance. Two drivers, Martin Truex Jr., Daniel Suarez are the only drivers to finish top five in both. Chase Elliott and Truex have the wins in those two races. And then there's only five drivers that finish top 10 in those 
in those two races. We've got Truex, Suarez, obviously. You got Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch, and Eric Jones in there as well. Um, we've got some lap slide. You're looking at uh, Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott have been the two dominator drivers over the last two years. And then just going and looking at career track history, Kyle Busch leads the way with he's the only active driver with two career wins here. Um, he leads in top fives and top tens here as well, as well as lap slide with 247. So he's definitely been the dominator guy, number one um, overall. He's probably going to end up being number one in my model, but it's very close with Bush and Truex right now. And then we want to look at road courses overall. Um, now this include this is going back to the start of 2017, so this includes the one Roval race and then all the other road course races. So there's only been four different winners. Martin Truex Jr. has won three of the last six road course races, and he was second in the other four top fives in that time, 179 laps led. He's been dominant on the road courses lately. Elliott Harvick and Blaney have also won. Blaney won the Roval race, um, which also should have been Martin Truex Jr.'s win, but uh, Jimmy Johnson ended up taking him out. Blaney picked up that win. So Truex and Kyle Busch are, you know, looking at all this information right now are definitely going to be uh, my top two guys right now. And then, you know, looking at form, um, who's hot coming in. Now, this isn't as important to me this week. It, it's always good to see who's coming in hot. But, I mean, we talked about Chase Elliott, how good he is at Watkins Glen, how good he, he won this race last year, um, how good he's been on the road courses overall. Now, you start coming here at the form, uh, you've got to scroll down quite a bit to find Chase Elliott. He's way down here um, in 30th spot when it comes to form, 27.5 average finish. No top 10s in the last six races, only two top 20s in the last six races. He's been just absolutely terrible. Um, that may help a little bit when it comes to his ownership this weekend. Um, but, I, you know, just being that he's good on the road courses, I don't think it's going to sway that much. So I'll definitely be going back to him um, this week for looking for him to figure it out here. And I, like I said, he showed some speed here in first practice as well. So coming in, we've got Eric Jones, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch. Uh, leading the way. So JGR takes up four of the top five spots when looking at average finish over the last six races. And then Ryan Newman, who's been like the number one value guy this year, um, along with Chris Buescher. Buescher's fallen off a little bit, but as you can see for his value price, six top 20s in each of the last six races is positive, especially seeing that drivers that are more expensive, more experienced than him. Um, there's only four drivers of the whole series who have top 20s in each of the last six races. So keep that in mind as well. So that kind of looks at some track history, some track type history, some current form going into the race. Uh, we looked at road courses. We looked at the correlation stuff between practice and finishing position here. Uh, we looked at practice one. We looked at some track information as well. A um, couple notes from opening practice here. We've got... I'm just going to pull out my notes here. Just give me a second. So Matt Tiff spun early. Uh, great video of Elliot just narrowly missing him. He kind of dove right and then had to dive left. Ended up being no damage on anyone, so nothing really to worry about there. Um, Matt DiBenedetto ended up uh, locking things up through the bus stop. Ended up blowing a tire. Um, there's possible damage. I'm going to have to double check on that. The JGR cars, like I said, they were all top 10, and Kyle Busch was the fastest overall uh, putting everything together. Alex Bowman, like I said, he topped the practice late. He was on a qualifying run. Bubba Wallace was last in first practice. He had a possible gear issue. We're going to have to look a little bit more into to see if he goes to a backup car, if they're just going to end up fixing that. And then Logano, in a post-practice interview, talked about uh, the speed here, and I thought maybe the new package would create more speed. He was talking about um, the rear spoiler kind of slowing them down a little bit. He was talking about how Yes, it's faster through the S's, um, but going into the corner, you're coming to the corners a lot slower than you were just because of that. But you can go into, you can go dig into the corners deeper just because of uh, that speed. You're coming in a little bit slower, so you don't have to hit on your brakes as fast. So <clears throat> take that with you will. I've got the video uh, link set up in the notes as well if you want to check that out. Uh, maybe read a little bit more on that. And more information here. So practice two is going on right now. I will update that on the sheet once that is done. Qualifying is later today, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. This is a impound race. So cars will be impounded after qualifying. Inspection will be 9, 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Same as last week, same as other weeks before. This will affect starting positions. They'll start with the, the car that wins the pole and they'll move their way back. 
Um, if a car fails inspection, <clears throat> they will go to the back on the pace laps to start the race. They will get a new um, starting position from like when we're talking FanDuel as well as DraftKings. They'll get a new starting position there as well because they do lose their qualifying time. They're not just going to the back. They lose their qualifying time and go to the back. So keep that in mind. I will be doing a live show once again tomorrow morning, probably around 11, 11.30 a.m. Eastern. I want to get it so uh, inspection is almost over, so I have a little bit more information to go off of. The cheat sheet, will, the member's cheat sheet will be updated with my top picks overall. The skeleton lineups um, with my cores that I will be using in GPPs this week will be posted as well. Um, other than that, if you have any questions in the meantime, definitely hit me up in the members only chat or on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs nine. Thanks for checking out the video. We'll talk to you all tomorrow morning.